Aloha Friday, everyone, and welcome to Lillian's Vegan World, where we talk about veganism and the plant-based diet. I'm coming to you live from the ThinkTech uh, Hawaii studios in downtown Honolulu, and I do want to thank uh, ThinkTech for allowing shows like this to broadcast, so huge mahalo to ThinkTech Hawaii. Today, I have a guest that I am actually meeting for the very first time, and she has sort of intrigued me in some sense. I, I met her on social media and I had to ask her to come on the show. Um, you'll see why as I introduce, and I'm very excited to introduce my guest today, <laughs> Ellen Hansen. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. The pleasure's all mine. Ellen, you are a nurse, yoga instructor, animal activist, <laughs> and vegan chef. Yes, <laughs> so you're one busy um, lady. I am very busy. <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't actually um, call you onto the show only because you're vegan. You just seem to have such a, a really healthy and positive and awesome lifestyle that I would love for you to share with our viewers. Sure. <laughs> well, I, I wasn't always healthy. I okay. was pretty much, um, like everybody else, sort of a disconnect between buying the food in the grocery mm -hmm. store and where it came from. And I was busy, I was working full time, going to school, raising a family. And like all the other moms I know, it was what was convenient and quick and not expensive. And then it was actually my daughter, Meredith Ruby. She lives here in Oahu and she's also a yoga instructor. She came home and said, you know, mom, I'm not gonna be eating meat anymore. And I thought, okay. what am I gonna cook now? So I had to start thinking about at least vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. And we did. We became vegetarian for quite a while. And then uh, I watched a video on YouTube called The Most Important Speech You'll Ever Hear by Gary Uralski. Mm -hmm. And that turned me into a vegan overnight. Okay. And I've been a vegan ever yeah, since. Yeah, he, he is amazing. Um, if anybody is interested in, in looking to hear some real... Um, good stuff. I think Gary is a place where you should start. He yeah. was uh, one of the first sort of vegan activists or people that I also listened to. Ellen, let's just back up a second, if you don't mind. How did, why did your daughter suddenly say to you that she wanted to stop eating meat or wanted to at least start becoming a vegetarian? Well, I think, you know, she moved into the city, into New York City, so she was exposed to a lot of different people. She started doing yoga, and she met some vegans, mm -hmm. and she didn't know what that was, but she knew she wanted a more healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So her friend, Heather, said, I can teach you how to do it, and she gave her a shopping list, and Meredith came home and told me what we had to clean out of the pantry. Wow. And, yeah, and, and that's how it started. And for me, I started to do more scientific research. Because I'm a nurse, I said, what is, what is it? Is it true that being a vegan is part of being human? Mm -hmm. Because everybody says you have to have protein. You yes. must eat meat, yes. right? Yeah. Where do you get your protein yeah. from? The so, million dollar question. <laughs> it doesn't matter how often we answer it. Right. <laughs> it still keeps coming back again and, and again. Yeah. But, and and but that's how we're trained, you know, from yes. childhood. You must mm -hmm. eat dairy. You must eat meat. And doing the scientific research and being in the medical field, mm -hmm. I started to notice that the people that were coming into the hospital were meat eaters, heavy dairy mm -hmm. eaters, soda okay. drinkers, mm -hmm. sugar, all the things that I've cut out of my diet right. and feel so much better. Now. Yet all the things that we grew up on, right. um, never ever you know, being told by our parents or teachers or doctors to, to stop eating that sort exactly. of stuff. So. It is uh, going to be very interesting to see what the younger generation now are like when they are, you know, in their middle age, when they're middle age, to see whether all of this, you know, this era of information that you just, you cannot escape, yeah. what kind of effect it's going to have on their health. Because now um, there really is no room for being brainwashed. You just can't do it anymore. And exactly. I think that's why people are starting to go, okay, well, we didn't know that. You know, our bodies are perhaps not meant to be consuming animal products and that's right. why probably we feel sick and that's probably why we get sick and 
you know, all of, all of the evidence seems to point in the direction that the plant-based diet is the healthiest one on the planet. Oh, there is absolutely. I, I, meet, I meet so many people when we do the Cube of Truth from uh, one of the organizations I volunteer for, and we do outreach. So we speak to people on the street, mm -hmm. and they are either defend their position that they cannot live without it. I met a girl who was uh, about 18, and she said, well, I'm an athlete. I have to eat meat. Oh, okay. So I went on my phone and I showed her a picture of some of the bodybuilders mm -hmm. that are vegan. Yes. And yeah. she, she thought it was fake. You know, she oh, said, okay. how do you build muscle without mm -hmm. meat? And I said, well, did you ever see a gorilla? Look at their muscles. They're mm -hmm. vegetarian. Yeah. So, you know, it's really, it's mostly education. Mm -hmm. We're brainwashed from birth. Mm -hmm. And you're right. Now with social media, there's so much more exposure. And I think that's a good thing because yes. it forces people to think for themselves. Definitely. Yeah. So, Ellen, you, you did mention that, I think, was it from the year 2000, you were actually um, a nurse and you were assisting in open, open heart surgeries for around six years? Right. I correct? used to do the anesthesia. I'm a nurse anesthetist. Oh, okay. That's mm -hmm. like an anesthesiologist. Mm -hmm. So I would um, put the patient to sleep for surgery, okay. and the open heart surgery is when the Arteries to the heart are actually blocked. So your heart's not getting any oxygen, and that causes a heart attack. Right. And all of the patients were meat eaters. Mm. I've never operated on a vegan. See, that's, um, that's quite fascinating, and that's very huge, what yes. you just said now. I actually looked online to find um, some information about that, and I, ne I needed a little bit more time, but mm -hmm. it, it's, it's definitely the fact that less vegans are on the operating tables absolutely um, undergoing heart surgeries. So Ellen, I did find a, a, an article that was published by Harvard, Harvard Medical School. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a quick disclaimer for this show, uh, no content on this show regardless of date should ever be used as a substitute for direct medical advice. Um, so do seek advice from your doctor or other medical professional um, if you are looking to change your diet in a very drastic way. But uh, I do want to talk about the article that, again, Harvard Medical School put out. And it, it, it says, quote, unquote, a vegan diet may help lower heart-damaging inflammation more than the diet recommended by the American Heart Association. Mm -hmm. A new study finds. The study included 100 people with heart disease which was defined as having at least one narrow heart artery. Half were randomly selected to follow a vegan diet, mm -hmm. which excludes meat, poultry, dairy, eggs, seafood, and fish. The others followed the AHA diet, so the American Heart Association mm -hmm. diet, which encourages lean, lean poultry, fish, and low-fat dairy products, along with plant-based foods. Yes. So all of, the, all of the participants received weekly groceries, a cookbook, and sample menus. They also provided 24-hour diet recall records twice a week on random days. Okay. Now, after, after eight weeks, of this study goes on to show that C-reactive protein, mm -hmm. what they are calling C, CRP, levels were 32% lower lower among people in the vegan diet group when compared with the AHA diet group. So elevated levels of C CRP, of course, are the marker of inflammation that are associated with a higher risk of heart attack. The study in the December 4, 2018 Journal of the American Heart Association lends further support for the benefits of plant-based diets. Absolutely. And I've yes, seen the so. same study with the American Cancer Society mm -hmm. where we now know that beef causes colon cancer. Mm -hmm. There's no question about it. Mm -hmm. And in their diet, they also suggest lean meat. Yes. And when you think about mm -hmm. meat in general, it is full of chemicals, hormones, antibiotics, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of horrible things yes. that we're ingesting yeah. sit in our liver. Mm -hmm. And how can that not affect our health, our circulatory system? So it's, it's very irresponsible of these huge um, 
associations that everybody looks to for guidance mm -hmm. in your diet and your health. Absolutely. To say that, it makes me wonder who is um, funding them. Yes, that's so well said, Ellen. I mean, uh, it's obvious there are some uh, big wigs out there that are kind of perhaps feeling threatened by this whole, um, not vegan movement, lifestyle. Yeah, right. because it's not a movement. It's definitely a, a healthy lifestyle. And anyway, I think uh, on this show, one thing that I do uh, hope that I'm achieving is to just bring more awareness and to have people, you know, people like yourself coming on the show and pointing all these, you know, really important facts out is, is incredible. I'm, well, I'm, yeah. great, I'm so grateful that you're here. To well, do I'm that. grateful that you're doing it because it is important work. And people tend to look at vegans as some weird, alien, uh, you know, <laughs> know. crazy yes. group of people. We, we can't seem to sort of shift outside of that stereotype, right. except, you know, we're walking around like normal people, yeah. looking like normal people, except only healthier. Right. Um, it, but yeah, that stereotype still somehow exists. Maybe one day, one day we'll be accepted in society as, as you know, part of the normal people. <laughs> And maybe eventually it will be the other way around, like the people that still consume animal products might be in the minority. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, who's one the can fanatic? Only hope. <laughs> um, Ellen, you, you prepared some slides for us. I would love to take a look at them okay. and look at some of them. So let's have a look at the first slide. This is your business card. Yes. So go ahead, Ellen, and talk about this. So that's my... Um, my business is Neighborhood Yoga. I'm a private and public yoga instructor. And I like to incorporate uh, yoga, and meditation, and nutrition. So a lot of my students start with yoga, and then they'll come to me and tell me what their medical issues are. And then I can sort of guide them in a plant-based diet. A lot of women suffer from really bad cramps, and they eat a lot of dairy, mm -hmm. and they are shocked when they cut dairy out of their lives that every month they don't have any cramps anymore. Yes. It's as simple as that. Yeah, it is amazing. Um, I, I became vegan about uh, almost 13 years ago now. Uh, prior to that, I was a vegetarian throughout my childhood, so I, I never ate meat or fish, but I always ate dairy. I ate dairy through all those sure. years, um, and again, for me, the most difficult thing that I was giving up was the cheese. But yeah. now we live in, in an era where vegan cheese, plant-based cheeses are everywhere. You can make them, you can buy them. Yeah. So um, it's gotten, definitely gotten a lot easier. Going back to, yes, you're also a yoga instructor. That's fantastic because it, it sort of all melds in what you're doing. Right. You know, you're on this really healthy lifestyle. You're, you're taking care of your body. Mm -hmm feeding it the good stuff, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you're also exercising and, you know, calming the mind as well because yoga is one of the best ways to not only exercise but also you get that meditate, meditation value that I think um, is also important. And I talk about this on the show that stress is one of the worst things that you can oh, do yeah. to yourself. So it's not only about food. However, you know, food obviously plays a huge role, but getting those stress levels down, finding ways to you know, make yourself feel good sure. in general. So, Well, yeah, you know, yoga. I, I did yoga for a year. I made a commitment when I first started mm -hmm. before I was teaching. I decided to do yoga every day for a year. So for wow. 365 days, I did That's yoga. That's incredible. And in that one year, I dropped my cholesterol 100 points without medication. Amazing. I dropped my blood pressure 25 points. And my doctor had put me wow. on Lipitor because my cholesterol was high. And a year later, she said, I see the Lipitor is working. And I said, I never took it. And she said, well, what did you do? I said, I did yoga. And she was stunned that it really worked. <laughs> I think it's, um, I think, it, I think nowadays, a lot of people like yourself actually are educating their doctors because they're, yeah. you know, they're, they're, they're quite, behind Very the times so. when it comes to this vegan thing. And I find it, every person that I meet who's um, on a plant-based diet knows so much about the diet, knows so oh, much yeah. about health, what they have to eat. And uh, the one thing that I also don't do is pop pills. Right. If I am going to need something for my body, it's going to come from food, and I'll right. find a way to, to get it. 
in. But Ellen, fascinating. Um, we are heading for our first or our, our little break before okay. the second half. So just sit there tightly. We've got so much more to talk about. And uh, please uh, stay tuned. We'll be back very shortly after the break. Aloha. My name is Mark Schlav. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. My program airs every other Monday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Hawaii. Most of my programs deal with my own life and law experience. Recently, I interviewed Alex Jempel, who I have known for over 30 years, about his voyage across the sea as a lawyer from Tokyo to Hawaii. Those are the type of stories that I like to bring and like to talk about. Human stories about law and life. Aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership, creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Welcome back everyone to Lillian's Vegan World. I have my awesome guest, Ellen Hansen, here with me today, yoga instructor, nurse, animal activist, vegan chef. Ellen, <laughs> you're kind of like what we would call the perfect vegan. <laughs> We've just been talking about um, yoga and how important it is and, you know, exercise. Um, Ellen, if you don't mind, I do want to show some more of your slides and what I've prepared. Let's have a look at the next one. Captain Mushroom. <laughs> what a wonderful name. Yeah. I love it. Tell us about this. So uh, slide. that's my husband Vance, mm -hmm. and uh, we used to live in the Virgin Islands. We had a charter boat company, and Vance was the captain. Mm -hmm. He owned the boat, and uh, we were hit with two Category Five hurricanes in 2017: mm -hmm. Hurricane Irma and Maria, mm -hmm. and it pretty much destroyed our island. So after living there without any power or water for six months, I came to Oahu, mm -hmm. visited my daughter mm -hmm. Meredith, and I went back and said to Vance. I'm going to Hawaii, and you can come with me if you want, or you can stay here. That sounds like a, like a <laughs> sweet way to give someone an ultimatum. Yes, it was sort of an ultimatum, and, and he was wonderful. He, he came with me to Oahu. It was a big, big change for him, but he said, what are we going to do now? And it was very difficult to get into the boating industry here, so he did a lot of research, and after a few months, he came up with, Let's grow mushrooms. Wow. And I thought, well, that's not anything I'm very familiar with. <laughs> I never thought of myself as a farmer, mm -hmm. but I trusted his judgment, and I came up with the name Captain Mushroom to incorporate the past life with the present that's life. That's so great. It's such a great name. And uh, I, I must say I'm sorry to hear that you had to go through that. It must have been tough. Um, that you're here now, thriving, yeah. not only surviving, thriving and enjoying life. It's, it's brilliant to see, and I'm so happy for oh, you. Thank you. Ellen, let's have a look at another slide. This is some of your vegan food. I had to ask you to um, <laughs> include shots of your food because I find your food to be very, very beautiful. Well, thank you. What have you got here, Ellen? So, um, the striped one is Indian food. It's sag paneer, mm. which is spinach and vegan cheese. Mm -hmm. And then instead of the chicken masala, I make a tofu masala. And in the middle is wasabi rice. And on the outside is garlic and uh, vegan butter naan. Yum. Yeah. <laughs> really delicious. And then the uh, top corner is my Italian vegan calzone with spinach and pepperoni mm. and sausage and cheese, yeah, all that's, vegan. That, mm. So for those of you out there who think they can't have their Italian food, there you go, vegan calzone. And then the bottom is a vegan lasagna, again with meat sauce and sausage and cheese, Parmesan cheese vegan and ricotta vegan and mozzarella vegan, all homemade cheeses. 
And I was a vegetarian for a long time as well, and cheese was the hardest thing to give up. Mm -hmm. But now I could never go back to regular greasy cheese. No, because vegan no, cheese is neither delicious. could I. That looks incredible. Yeah. And it just goes to show, like, you've got vegan all over that slide, but if you, if you didn't have the word vegan there, no one would really know. No one would know. And yeah. I'm sure that it is absolutely not only delicious but also very satisfying, which is something that I think people um, are still these days misled into believing that somehow uh, vegan food or plant-based um, dishes are not very satisfying, right. but they are very hearty and filling right. because we have so much fiber in there um, as well. But the other, th the other thing about vegan food I find that my students or clients always say to me is after they eat you know, huge amounts of vegan food in one sitting, they don't feel sick after. Right, or sluggish. Or sluggish. Yeah. They don't get that downer. You know, when people eat a burger and fries or something, you have to immediately, take yeah, they, yeah, they're down. That's it. Yeah. They're gone. So that's something that we don't have to deal with anymore, which right. is another um, benefit of being on we're, the We're much more productive. Yes. Yeah, I don't need a nap at 4 o'clock no, anymore. I actually, I get more productive and more energetic, basically. Yeah, definitely. So that's a... Perhaps a good thing. <laughs> Let's have a look at another one, Ellen. Oh, Beautiful. Okay. So yeah, I wanted to um, talk about breakfast food because everybody thinks vegans only eat salad. Mm -hmm. And in the top left there is a vegan omelet with sausage and cheese and vegan eggs made out of tofu. I and showed, sorry, Ellen, I showed this particular picture to my husband uh -huh. and he's asked me to cook something that looks like that. Sure. So, <laughs> so I'm going to have to steal that um, <laughs> Very idea simple. of yours. It it's, looks just beautiful. It's easy. And then um, in the lower corner, that heart shape is one of our mushrooms from our company, Captain Mushroom. That's a uh, elm oyster mushroom over quinoa and rice infused with ginger. And then underneath is just eggplant and peppers, a whole bunch of different vegetables in uh, a secret place. Mm. And then the big one is my vegan chocolate mousse. Yum. So <laughs> there is no dairy in that. It is made with coconut milk and avocados mm -hmm. and a little cocoa. And it's so easy to make. It's things that I have in the house all the time. I don't have to go to the store. If mm -hmm. I want chocolate, I have it mm -hmm. right in my house. That's another thing that um, a lot of people don't um, really um, know about, that avocado and chocolate it makes a really great mousse, makes oh, a really yeah. great dessert, and mm -hmm. it's just so good for you. This is all like guilt-free eating, isn't it? Right. But very sophisticated, your food. I mean, <laughs> I'm, very, I'm, I'm really loving it. Oh, thank you. The flavors, the spices, the, the presentation, it's, it's very um, clever. Cooking. Thank you. Yeah. Let's have a look at another one. Uh, this is what uh, I've got coming up this month. Ellen, as I told you, I am a chef, a vegan chef, and this month is all about Serbian cuisine gone vegan. So all of my events, cooking demos, uh, lessons, and seven-course lunches and dinners are going to be centered around the Serbian cuisine, which I'm veganizing. <laughs> Very exciting. Yeah, so the star of this one's going to be my um, feta, vegan feta cheese oh, that I make wow. from tofu. And that's going to be incorporated into a lot of the, the dishes there. You can see the pie, that's actually a spinach and a feta, vegan feta cheese pillow pastry pie. Nice. Very popular in Serbia. My father was Serbian. Mm -hmm. So I grew up eating a lot of um, Serbian food and having visited Serbia for so many times it has the most amazing food, very underrated. Mm. So I hope that uh, people come and join my Serbian month. <laughs> Definitely. Vegan uh, feta cheese. I know so many people that would love that recipe. Yeah, and so, so simple to make and made yeah. from tofu. So yeah. very, very quick and simple. That's neat. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at another one. There it is. Oh, yes, nice. the vegan, the vegan feta. Very simple. but. Very, you know, that, that salty edge, it just it makes food pop. And, right. you know, when you, you, want, you want to, like, you know, stimulate your palate when you're eating. Absolutely. You don't want to be eating bland food. Again, another misconception and myth about plant-based food because it, it's just so tasty. And I think that uh, the tofu, 
when you prepare it correctly, it really takes on the right texture. Yes. Especially of yeah. a feta cheese. Yeah, it does. It's, it's so for similar. That. Yeah. You really wouldn't know the difference if it was, you know, crumbled up and Definitely added to not. dishes and stuff. So, yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward That's to cool. that. <laughs> Next one, please, Haley. Uh, I do want to say thank you to Down to Earth. Um, I had a really great class uh, on Tuesday a few nights ago where I was doing my vegan cashew cheeses. So thank you very much, Down to Earth, and everyone who came to the class. Really appreciate it. Big mahalo to you all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And the next one, so here's just some dates for my um, vegan Serbian month. You can take a look at slowly and some of the dishes that I'll be serving, all Serbian dishes, very uh, delicious, very unique in flavour, something I don't see much or any of in Honolulu. Right. So it should be interesting. And the next one, please, Haley. Here we go. Okay. These stunning. This is, these are all your creations, you and your husband, Vance, at Captain Mushroom. Right. So these are um, where the mushrooms grow. They grow indoors in climate control. It's very, very technical. Uh, Vance takes care of all of that. I just cook them and eat them. <laughs> but in the top left corner are the blues, and they're delicious mushrooms. They're, they hold Incredible. up well in recipes. The ones in the right are called uh, elms, and uh, they grow in tents. Awesome. They, they look so amazing. And I do have some here that you've brought in sure. that are gorgeous, these elms. Sorry, we're running out of time, Ellen, but could you quickly tell us how we can buy these or get our hands on some, some of these gorgeous sure. mushrooms? You can just uh, give us a call at Captain Mushroom and put in your order, yeah. and we'll deliver. Okay. What's the number? It's 808 360 mm -hmm. Five two six two two. Ellen, these look amazing, and I believe I'm going to have the pleasure to meet uh, Captain Mushroom <laughs> on my next show, where we're going to go into more detail about these beautiful shrooms that you've got. Thank you, um, Ellen. It's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank, Thank you. you so much for for coming. Great Thanks meeting for you. Me. <laughs> this was wonderful. For me as well. And thank you everyone for tuning in again. Looking forward to seeing you all next time on Lillian's Vegan World. Have a great weekend and aloha. <laughs>